welcome again guys in this video we'll be talking about uh, rna sequencing rna sequencing is something that people don't talk about too much uh, people talk about dna sequencing but rna sequencing is also important and nowadays uh, once in the zone of transcriptomics uh, we lot of the time we need to sequence rna to check certain important feature inside the cell so that is usually called as uh, the whole transcriptome whole transcriptome RNA sequencing RNA shotgun sequencing or simply W T S S whole transcriptome shotgun sequencing so what is transcriptome we have already talked about it if you don't know what it is you can go back to my channel you will find a video about transcriptome watch that video and then uh, you can join us but actually transcriptome means all the content of rna that is present in a cell every bit of rna mrna trna rrna uh, non coding part of the rna degraded part of the rna whatever rna content is present inside the cell all together is termed as transcriptome so if we need to sequence all of them we take all the transcriptome of the cell and then we sequence every single piece of rna small rna degraded rna longer rna every bit of RNA uh, to get the detailed picture of uh, the RNA inside the cell. Now the question remains, uh, sequencing genome is important and we know that, but what is the importance of RNA sequencing? Now the important is that RNA sequencing can tell a certain insight, important insight about the cell. One is that, one of the important thing about RNA sequencing is that RNA uh, sequencing can give us the idea about uh, any kind of single nucleotide polymorphism or mutation that is found uh, in the RNA content. Say from the DNA we produce RNA but during the production of RNA from the DNA using transcription process there are, might be some changes, some mutation, some single nucleotide polymorphism that may result in change the, in, in, the, in the sequence of RNA and we can detect it using the SNP mutation this, this RNA sequencing process. That is one thing uh, that we can detect about the RNA sequencing. Uh, another important thing that we can detect is that there is, is there any change, any kind of change uh, here. So that is one thing and other features uh, also includes the alternative splicing, alternative splicing if you don't know what it is i have a separate video about alternative splicing also you must watch that video alternative splicing is like the other type of splicing which varies and changes different variety of uh, mrna transcript inside the cell from one single gene it may produce multiple varieties of mrna inside the cell so from one gene we can produce many different varieties of proteins inside the cell with different functionality that is the alternative splicing. So we can detect if the cell undergoes any kind of alternative splicing or not, if we have any SNP or mutation or not, or is there presence of any post-transcriptional post -transcriptional modification. So we can detect all these processes. SNP mutation or alternative splicing or post-transcriptional modification Gene fusion is another thing we can detect using RNA sequencing technology. So that's why we need to sequence RNA. Now how could you sequence RNA? Now dealing with RNA is much more difficult than dealing with DNA because RNA uh, is very much fragile. It is vulnerable to damage uh, because it do not have that uh, uh, 2 prime OH present in the ribose sugar which is present in deoxyribose. That, uh, creates a very important inside there. They have a OH there instead of simple uh, o, uh, simple H. So that's the problem there. So anything, now this, D, now this RNA sequencing uh, relies in two different ways. There are two different types of RNA sequencing actually. Uh, if, I, if I like the types, two different types are present. One is the, the uh, direct RNA sequencing, another one is the indirect RNA sequencing. In either way, some basic characteristics remains the same, 
but certain things are different. So if I draw the schematic presentation of how the sequencing will work, we know the first thing is the extraction of RNA using the normal RNA extraction method from a cell. Then isolation of RNA content because the RNA content is huge. Normally the DNA is kind of same in all the cells, the DNA contents are same but RNA in itself inside the cell is at least three of different kinds, mRNA, rRNA, tRNA and if there is any other degraded portion of the RNA it will be small RNA, small nuclear RNA, ribonuclear RNA so all these different varieties of RNA will be present there. So there are variety of RNA present and it is very important to isolate the type of RNA you need to sequence. So that is the second important phase isolation and after the isolation what we go for? We go for the sequencing process. So that is the third and the final step. Now this is common for direct as well as indirect type of RNA sequencing. Now extraction is same in all these cases, I am not going to talk about that. But isolation can be done and achieved by two different ways, uh, actually three different ways here. Uh, the isolation for direct, indirect, both these things. If the isolation is only for the mRNA, what we can use, we, we can use uh, which is called a poly A library. We can use poly A library if you are only selecting mRNA and because most of the time we sequence mRNA because mRNA is the actual transcript from where the proteins are made, proteins are made right. So for that reason most of the time we need to sequence mRNA not the other type of RNAs. So that's why poly A library is the most common process of isolation of mRNA from, from the content of other RNA mixture. But other techniques uh, lies like there are two other techniques present here also. One technique is uh, the size exclusion chromatography, another one is the size exclusion uh, magnetic bead. These two processes are there size exclusion magnetic beads and size exclusion chromatography. Now, remember both of these techniques uh, are there for the smaller fragment of RNA like small RNAs like tRNAs like other degraded portion of the mRNAs and all the other types of RNAs but for the mRNA we use poly A library. Now what does that mean what is poly A library and how does it actually work? The poly A library is extremely simple the thing is here uh, I am going to talk about most of this about the poly A library process and how this works is that we have now let us say we have a mixture so let, let me erase some of this stuff over there. What is poly A library? Poly A library, remember in eukaryotic cell, because we are talking about eukaryotic cell here in, in details about the RNA sequencing and all these things, transcriptome, we majorly talk about eukaryotes here. So in eukaryotes what we know uh, is that after the mRNA is produced, that mRNA is termed as the pre-mRNA, it is treated, the 5 prime capping, 3 prime polyadenylation should take place to make it as a complex uh, to make it a mature mRNA. So once the mature mRNA is made, the mature mRNA should have 5 prime cap, it has a poly A tail at the 3 prime. So this is the construct of mRNA. tRNA and rRNA do not have this content. So if I draw a tRNA structure or an, let's say the rRNA is a huge this structure, they don't have those poly A tail. Now once we add, we have beads, let's say we have beads. And that beads are having poly T residues attached to them, poly T residues attached to uh, the terminal. So what is the idea now? So these beads are filled with poly T residues protruding out from the beads. But all of this, so they can easily pair with adenine because thymine can pair with adenine. But as tRNA and rRNA do not have any of this poly A tail, they will not bind with the bead but poly A tail is present in mRNA. So all these mRNAs can pair with, with these beads. So once they pair with the bead, so we can select the specific type of mRNA only from other varieties of RNA present in the cell. And, the, and once you provide, once you, once you do this task of isolation using the beads, what we call it as a poly A library because it is a kind of library filled with all the mRNA content of the cell uh, and they are added with the beads. So it's kind of 
poly a library and as we use poly a tail to create the library we call it a poly a library so once the poly a library is made then what we do we use the normal sequencing process and the sequencing process for actual sequencing that we use in this case remember uh, in this case we use high throughput sequencing or next generation sequencing we use this type of sequencing techniques for that now what is next generation sequencing what is high throughput sequencing i will highly encourage you to go and watch these videos in my channel you will find video on high throughput sequencing you will find the video on uh, this ngs or uh, next generation sequencing in my channel so watch those videos i'm not going to talk about them because there are larger videos so then finally we sequence it with any of these processes the next generation or high throughput sequencing now this is the way now now about the direct and indirect stuff that we are going to talk about here the direct and indirect stuff that is present here that is that is uh, an important thing that sometimes what we do we only sequence this mrna let's say here in this case we we add this mrna to the beads and then we sequence this mrna content only the new ribose, ribose sugar content here from only but in other cases that's called the direct type of sequencing because we're sequencing directly the rna we're sequencing the rna directly so this is direct sequencing but there are some times when we do not sequence the rna what we do we take that rna we isolate the RNA, that is a very, very important step. We isolate the RNA by either size exclusion chromatography or magnetic uh, chromatography, magnetic bead, uh, bead system. So, the size exclusion chromatography means simply uh, this is a chromatography or gel, not actually chrom uh, sometimes chromatography or gel. It is a gel where uh, the larger fragments trap, smaller fragments travel fast, so we can pick up those RNAs from there. So, once we have them, <coughs> we do not directly sequence the RNA. What we do so we have the rna we build the other strand of dna the complementary strand of the dna using a reverse transcriptase enzyme you know we can produce dna strand from rna using the reverse transcriptase so if, if we have the rna here we add the deoxyribonucleotide sequences one after another and we prepare this single stranded dna sequence there we produce that dna once we produce that DNA, then we produce the, uh, the double stranded DNA sometimes, sometimes not, if we require or not. But that is called as a complementary DNA or cDNA because it is produced from its complementary RNA strand. So that is the complementary DNA. So sometimes you produce this DNA using reverse transcriptase enzyme and the process called reverse, transcriptase, uh, reverse transcription. Once you produce that DNA, then we go for the sequencing. And that process is called as the indirect process of RNA sequencing. Now, you may ask, in what sense is an RNA sequencing? The answer is, there are, we have, you know, uh, the answer here is that whatever, this is the better thing about the uh, genomics because whatever thing is present in the RNA, we know uh, the complementary stand of that, whatever it is DNA or not, whatever thing is present in the complementary, we can actually get the idea that if it is A, the complementary will be T. If it is U, the complementary will be A. If it is G in the RNA, the complementary of DNA will be C. So, if we know the sequence of DNA, we can count it back using complementary nature of the DNA to find out the actual RNA sequence. So, we are actually doing it similar and going back. So, you may ask that why we are doing this? Why we are not going direct? Because direct is best. Obviously, direct is the best. Direct is obviously the better technique. But what happens actually, the RNA, I have told you, RNA handling is difficult. And all the labs, RNA sequencing facilities are not available. But DNA sequencing is much more common. So we have machines for the DNA sequencing rapidly all the time going on. So what we do, we, we reverse transcribe the RNA to DNA. We do that, we sequence that. Then we go back uh, track using the complementary nature of the RNA DNA hybrid and check for the RNA sequencing. But still, there are the chances of error in this complement in this indirect type of RNA sequencing. So direct is obviously the better choice. So that is all about the RNA sequencing in a nutshell. If you like the video, uh, hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this. Share this a lot with your friends because sharing is cool. So share it and like this video. Thank you.